Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Horror Inside podcast. It's me, Brandy, here with Dylan, as always, to yeah. talk about yay <laughs> to talk about another horror movie. As anyone that does follow this podcast and listen, um, thank you. First of all, if you do, that's awesome. Mm. Um, but we have been on a kick as some of you may know that do follow us, um, of showing each other horror movies that the other person either has maybe only seen once or never seen ever. I think this movie may be a case where you did see it once a long time ago, Dylan, but never really went back to it. I did see it once, yes, yeah. two years ago, because I believe it was also on Amazon, which it is now, and that's how I watched. we watched it. Um, so I saw it once. Okay. So, in the last yeah, so, handful of years. Right, so it's not like one you're super familiar with, but it's not like you had never seen it, and obviously everyone's No, heard of before it. we watched it, uh, I believe I said, and I stood to this, that the only thing I really remembered about that, and th- things came back to me as we went through it, but right. generally speaking, the only thing I really remembered was the two main actors. That was right. about it. Well, they're very memorable, so that's a good thing to remember. <laughs> um, but, but yes, we were, of course, talking about the Amityville Horror, which I think. If, if anybody even is just a general, uh, I almost said Resident Evil, holy shit. You can cut that out if you want, but or you can just keep it to so, show how obsessed I am with Resident Evil. <laughs> if anybody is just a general horror fan, is what I meant to say, a horror movie fan, I'm sure that people have heard the name Amityville Horror. I'm sure they've heard of, there's so many movies now, it's kind of actually ridiculous. I think when you looked on the uh, Wikipedia, what was it, like 20-some movies in all? 20-something. Wow, and some of the titles were <laughs> sounded so stupid. I know, and I'm sure, and I think uh, even when we had Eric, when we had him on, and he, your brother, of course, when brother, we had him, yeah. he said um, he said um, that some of them were actually pretty good, and I should give them a chance, and I would be willing to do that, because I'm sure they're not all total garbage, but the fact that there's that many right. of them, and he said some are just completely, absolutely ridiculous, as people would expect. Yeah, yeah, some of them aren't connected to, I guess it's just one of those things where they can use the name, I don't know. Right, yeah, I know, I don't know how that works, but, um, but I think the appeal to it is like, the house itself, everybody, when you think of Amityville, you always think of those windows and that look like the eyeballs. I think that's like, I think that's why this movie, and I, maybe that's why it's been so ongoing and it's been used so, I think even a recent one was made. I think the most recent you said was like sometime in the last couple of years. An Amityville 2018 movie. maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's insane because, it, I mean, the original movie came out in 79. And yeah. um, the original, I think the book that the Lutzes wrote that the movie's based on was like, 78 probably probably like the year before whatever um so this is like a story that happened in the 70s which it's really really cool because this movie is apparently based on true events how true they actually are a lot of people think the lutzes are completely full of shit and they just wanted to, uh-huh. to make money whatever um but the story of the defeo family that lived there first that were murdered is actually true it's uh, true ronnie defeo yeah he yeah. like went nuts and like shot his whole family um, there are weird circumstances. I actually, to start off, I guess that's the beginning of the movie anyway. You see like him go through the house. You don't really know what's mm-hmm. happening. It's like close-up shots of everybody just getting shot. But in the actual story, and they do show this in the movie, he shoots everybody from in like the back. Like they're all like sleeping and they're all like laying on their – and he just – but like nobody wakes up, nobody hears the gun, and he's got like a like a rifle or a big shotgun or something that he's using to kill his whole family. Nobody wakes up and nobody heard any of the gunfire, so nobody was able to get up, call the cops, try to stop this. Everybody was like asleep, which is really weird. When he was uh, on trial, he did testify that he heard voices. I think this is all true too, that he mm. heard voices in the house telling him to kill his family. He could have just been crazy and on drugs. It was the fucking seventies. Like who knows? <laughs> it, it may whatever. Whatever anybody chooses to believe, I'm not going to – I personally, myself, just to say, I personally do believe in ghosts and spirits and shit like that. Mm-hmm. I just always have, but, I mean, I don't know. I think – I do, too, stuff, to an extent. Cool. Well, I mean, I believe potentially that there might be something, but um, I am also a skeptic when it comes to certain things. Like, certain things I don't right. believe. Like, certain people I do believe are full of shit, but I don't know oh, enough yeah. about the, their real story to have an opinion one way or the other. Well, there was like this thing that apparently came out like a couple of years ago that said the Lutzes literally made everything up. And the guy that helped him write it was just a creative storyteller. And they literally made it all up after the murders. But I find it weird that they did up and abandon the house and just never went back. They didn't go out back for any of their belongings. So I think something I think some of it's exaggerated. I think I told you this when we were watching the movie. I think some parts of it may be exaggerated, like some of the more 
big things that happen, but there's I'm sure because really... things are done like that for movies. For movies, exactly. And I'm I'm like, okay, that that probably like you know when when George randomly has like bloody like bite marks on his ankle. I mean, I guess that could have appeared out of nowhere and happened, but <laughs> I, there's like some bigger or or like when he finds that um that like I don't know if you remember this, but down in like the cellar there was like behind that wall it was like all red and yeah looking at yeah. So there was that which may have been exaggerated, but. I think the little things are very interesting in this movie, like the very subtle things like um, the Lutz is reported hearing. I actually watched interviews of this hearing like drums at a certain time of night, like they would hear like like what sounded like either like tribal drums or like in the movie, it sounds more of like a marching band type of drum. And George gets up in the movie and it's very subtle. It's just in the background of, of the movie. You just hear these drums and he's like, what the hell? And he's looking around. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I like that because I think those things are really believable when it's little things like that. that it's just like, oh, you could. You wake up at a certain time and you just hear these weird noises like that's a little creepy. I don't know. Maybe maybe I get creeped out by like the subtlety because it's more realistic. I always said subtlety scares me more than just like really in your face things, which. Oh, I forgot to say, too, when I introduced is that we are also going to be kind of meshing two podcasts together. Sort of. We are going to talk very briefly about the 2005 remake with Ryan Reynolds because. I did want to share that with Dylan after we watched the masterpiece. That there were so about. many stupid so. <laughs> ass moments that I, I want to make sure we remember. Yeah, no, I will. I'm going to try to hit all the ones I at least think of. And if you have any more, please share, because I think, I think it's a good idea to sort of, cause I would never want to dedicate a whole podcast to talking about the remake. It's that awful. But <laughs> when I really like a, a movie and it comes out with a really bad remake, sometimes I do get enjoyment out of watching the remake. So that's why I had Dylan sort of, and they were both free on Amazon. So I was like, why not? Let's just watch them. And we actually watched mm. them back to back we started back. with the original mm-hmm. and then like Which literally 10 and... minutes later watched the, the remake. yeah it was fun to do that yeah to sort of see the differences but okay so i just wanted to say that but i guess going back and my first question dylan is i guess i guess this is a better question for kind of the end when we're wrapping up but i guess to sort of just start off what did you honestly think of the movie overall i mean do you agree with me as well with like the little subtle creepy things were they done well and yeah i like this is a movie I grew up with. I absolutely love it. And I love the little low moving, creepy things in it. Like the, even like when the priest goes in and it says, get out. And it's like that little whisper. Right. Yeah. So good. <laughs> no, I thought all that was really, really creepy and, and, and well done. Um, it yeah. made it, um, it, it just, it also just have the backdrop of what happened in the house before and why did that happen? Right. And that's kind of interesting and disturbing to think about. Right. And um, uh, well, you mentioned the priest and um, I, I, I think I really liked that scene. It was it was it was gross, but it was also like, <laughs> yeah, why are all those things drawn there? And then they go back later and there's like a couple once or twice they might go back to that room and there was nothing there. Like all the flies. Yeah, yeah they would be gone <clears> or something, but then they reappear. But I do have really- to. I do have to say on that, I, I th- remember that scene and then immediately remember the stupidity of the remake where, like, what just a dwarm of flies just oh, yeah, comes out, out of the vent and, like, <laughs> knocks <blow them>. up. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Oh, my God. I'm actually glad you mentioned that because I feel like the pre-scene is so iconic in the in the original it's even parodied in fucking scary movie too i think we, i think it's scary movie too where they do that yeah um, I, I vaguely remember that and then like yeah you know they he's really affected by the house and it like makes yes. him sick and everything and then it he goes back and the, yeah. the like the other priests just don't believe him or whatever and they're really awful about it yeah, speaking on that, I think I said this to you when you and I were watching it. I said the I, I think every actor in that movie does an amazing job. I love Margot Kidder. I love um, James Brolin. They're both yeah. amazing. But I do think, and I I should have the IMDb pulled up. I'm so not professional with my favorite movies, but I don't know who <laughs> plays the priest. But I think he's so good. And the when he's when he's trying to argue his points to the other priest, and he's getting really frustrated, and his like veins are pot, and he's getting so like, and you can tell he was really, really, really affected by the house, and his acting reflects that. I love that whole thing. Mm. So I am glad you brought that up because that's like and that scene is so iconic. But I was trying to say like the scene is so iconic in the original. And then it's funny you mentioned the remake because I barely remember that scene in the remake just because it was so. It, it probably so was like rushed. really quick too. Yeah. Like yeah. Just boom. And then oh shit. And then he just then, gets out. Yeah. Whatever. Just, <laughs> um, that actor's name is Rod Steiger. Let me make yeah. sure we mentioned it. I just looked yeah, it up. Yeah. Shout out to him because he's awesome. I, it's like weird. I have like a thing where like in almost all my favorite horror movies there's like an adorable old man character that I just like fall in love with. And he must be that one for this one because he's so good. I know. Um, I know. 
but I always loved that your your love of Donald Pleasance went to a whole new level after I showed you the sequels, and he just oh gets more and more adorable and batshit. He does. He's, I know. I love him. I definitely need to rewatch those because, oh my god, he's adorable. Every, anytime we get a chance to talk about Donald Pleasance, yeah. we'll, I'm going to say that. Shout out Donald Pleasance. <laughs> there's a scene. There's a scene. Um, and just to preface this, I do have the movie muted in the background just to help jog my memory because it's been a little bit since we watched it. And I want to. Oh yeah. The if there's anything. Yeah. Um, I remember we said this in the podcast, or you said it, like, she's kind of smart to do it. So, like, the realtor, there's a scene in the kitchen where she's, like, filling out paperwork, and then her paperwork starts to blow, and she's looking around, and she doesn't know what's going on, and then she just fucking leaves. Yeah, <laughs> like, that, it, yeah she's just out. I like how smart that is, because, like, most, you know, look around the house, and they, she was just, like, I would have thought she would have she would have stayed around, looked around, and, said, Hello? And, then, yeah, and then no, maybe no, no. got, like, killed or disappeared, and then you never see her again. Yeah, and that would be such a. Cl- I am uh, again. I do like how this movie sticks to. I get. I'm. I'm sure it's 100% what was in the Lutz's book, and I think that helps with the realism. It's very subtle. There's no like big bloody deaths. Or I mean, it does get a little crazy later on, and we can talk about the ending, which I still love it. It still fits and works with the movie, but um, I do love that this movie is just about a creepy ass house that just starts fucking with all the people that live in it. It's not about like blood and guts and it's, and it's not even really ghostly because you don't really see anything although there is an awesome scene at the end which i definitely want to talk about talked about it a little bit in the podcast with your brother it's my favorite scene from from this movie because it's so creepy and weird mm. so we're definitely going to talk about that and i want to get your full opinion on that because we did talk right. a little bit about it when it came on i think you know what i mean but i definitely want to get your whole opinion on that but um, i don't know I'll, I'll remember when you say it Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> well, that's I'll be like, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like my favorite moment. Um, yeah, no, I the little things like that, like I when you just mentioned the the realtor, I remember I think I said that when, and then there's a similar scene in the remake, but I think like she sees a shadow or something. I don't know. I don't even know if you stay in the house afterwards with the realtor. If she just sees that as she's showing them the house, I don't really remember. But either way, it's just not as effective. Right. And I remember you saying in the, you, I know you have it muted so you can't hear it, and I don't, I don't even think you got to the scene yet where the priest is, comes to bless the house, but no. I remember you were like, oh, that was cool because it got really, really, the, it, it gets kind of loud, like you hear the flies, like that's like the thing you're, you're hearing, like the buzzing of the flies and all this like hectic stuff and the priest is like coughing you can tell he's getting sick well then all of a sudden the whole movie goes like si- it's almost like somebody hits like mute and the mm-hmm. whole movie gets silent and then the door opens and that's when you hear get out and it's just a whisper and i remember you saying and that's why again i love this movie and it's so different from movies made today you're like oh if that was made today it would get all silent and then there'd be a huge jump scare but it was just silent and then that whisper of get out which is like so iconic too and then then the voice does get a little louder. It says, get out again. And it's like a demonic voice. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's, and it yells it, but there's no boom jump scare. There's no like music cue. There's nothing. It's just that silence and that voice. Right. And then he, he leaves and you feel that like threat threat in the air. I just love that. I remember you saying something about that, mm-hmm. which I love, which I'm sure it's different yeah. in the remake, which I really can't remember. But <laughs> If that's even fair, but it probably I know, is. Right? <laughs> um, yeah. But on him, I just wanted to say, I think he was a great character. And then, um, like it was, it was, it was nice. It was kind of very interesting to see, like it outside of the family. Like it's not just affecting the family. Yeah. And then uh, lingers, I, I also I did want to bring up because I think when we were watching, you were like even like, is he really? This is the first time he showed up. Doesn't he have like two scenes in the remake or something? Yeah, yeah. He shows up for to to the the bless the house scene, and I don't. I think it's like really far into. I think. Uh, in the original, he shows up right after they move in or whatever. So you're, it's probably coming yeah. up soon on your screen or whatever. But I think in the remake, it takes him for – they're there for like a while. I think George already starts going kind of crazy and acting all aggressive before the priest even comes to bless the house. He comes to bless it, and then I think he's in literally one other scene later where Kathy, the main character, the mom character, goes to see – and that never happens in the original. In the original, Kathy and – I think his name's Father Delaney – Mm-hmm. Um, they never, they never interact or see each other because the house keeps them apart. She tries to call him, the phone gets messed up. He tries to call her, and then literally, right? And isn't in like the original bit. too? In the original, they also have a much deeper like relationship and connection. Yes, yeah, which, it's like stated that she she calls and she's talking to the other priest, which is like Father right. Delaney's like right hand man. I, I actually can't remember his name, but he's he's good too. Um, she Whereas in the she, remake, I feel like she just goes there because it's just like, oh, weird stuff is happening. I need a priest. Yeah, I need, I need a priest. Yeah, that's what I always thought too. I, I love in the remake she says something to the other to the other priest and she goes, you don't understand Father Delaney. He's more than just a priest to me. He's like a, he's like a 
uh, or he's like family. She said, he's gotten me through some very difficult times in my life. And when she says that, I always, I always thought, and again, there's no reference to this. So this just might be my mind making stuff up, but I always thought like, Oh, maybe he helped her when, cause I think the, the father of her children, because George isn't their father. And they, oh, right. the movie. I think like he did pass away or something. Ha- they do talk about that in the remake, which I, one thing I do like about the remake is they do go a little bit more into the backstory of the dad. Um, they don't say how he died or whatever, but he passed away. And they don't really ever mention that in, in this one, but I always kind of thought about that. Like, oh, maybe when her husband, her first husband passed, like this, this priest really got her through the grieving or whatever. I don't know. And she's, Kathy's supposed to be a pretty religious character anyway. Like she hangs mm-hmm. that, that crucifix in the house right away. And she just seems like she. And doesn't she have a, like her sister or aunt or something? Is that nun who is great? Oh, her, yeah, it's her aunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, yeah, yeah, she, she's great. Um. <laughs> Like even before that one particular scene, <laughs> she was kind of great and like kind of animated and a little exaggerated. I feel like which I I liked that. Yeah, I remember the the kids. She's like, go let your aunt uh, Helen. I think her name's Helen or something like that. Go go let her in. She's always pinching. Remember when the kids say that? And then doesn't she her laugh her head, head off about something yeah, when they, she's, what she's they like, said is not funny? Where's your fun. mother? And she's like, oh, she'll be down in a second. Oh, <laughs> like she's just very like <laughs> happy and like giddy. And then. But I do like that trans like she's this pippy, happy, like sweet old lady character. And then as the the boys, the the kids walk away from her and she's left alone in the house, her whole demeanor starts to change too, because it's like any religious figure. And of course, Kathy has an aunt that's a nun. She's close with a priest. She has all these religious people come into the house. They just get like really sick. But it's funny, I always said this, it, it doesn't affect her the way it it affects Father Delaney. And maybe that's because he actually went there to bless the house. Like, she just went uh-huh. there to visit or whatever, and then she left right away. But I always thought maybe it sticks with Father Delaney because he actually went there to perform. Right, and of- he – and I – because I'm on, I'm on that scene now, and he, like – he – it seems like a little bit, like, that whatever is wrong with the house kind of – like, it does make him sick and sort of all that. And then yeah. – um, but it feels like it, like, at first – tried to keep him from leaving or something because i just i saw him like sitting down and maybe it's because it was making him sick but like and then he was just in that but like if 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 it wasn't keeping him there i feel like mm-hmm. why would he have not just run out because the million flies on him and i, I just want to add said this when we watched it i was like how did they shoot that scene and i would have hated to shoot that scene like how yeah. did they get all those flies that room must have stunk and then all know. of his face I know I would love to watch and as much as I love the movie I should have watched one by now I would love to watch like a documentary or the making of this movie because just all the little effects and stuff and they're all practical obviously this came out in 79 so I think that's really really cool and the little close-ups of the flies and everything it's, right. it's very very interesting they probably just really, like, cover the room in shit or something probably <laughs> yeah that's what I said like that's what I mean like how how do they do that um there's just there's one really cool shot that just showed up that i i feel like i want to point out because i remember liking it the first time we watched it Mm -hmm. it was after he left and the the father walks past and you see just like a hand sort of hanging backwards and it looks like he's like just the way it's shot makes it look like oh somebody's dead or something oh the little girl it's just it's her like sleeping in a box or something but the way it's shot you don't know what it is it looks like somebody's dead I've always loved the way that was shot. When I was, I remember when I was younger, I used to confuse me. I'm like, is she really sleeping like that? What the hell? But like, I like, I like that because it does add. Again, atmosphere is so important in a horror movie, and this movie has a lot of that with just the way that it's shot. Yeah. And you know, I think you and I both talked about too um, that that creep show. We always say creep show lighting in the very uh-huh. beginning, and it happens throughout the movie with shots of the houses, the house. Like you see, like the creepy window eyes or whatever, and then like there's like just this red filter on it, which looks super super cool. I like that. Yeah. And I think you and I were talking about, we're like, oh, that wouldn't happen today because the audience would be like, well, what's that? Why was that filter red? Is there somebody looking at them with red? Like, like people would just be so confused. Whereas like you and I like just love that. Oh, it's just a creative aesthetic choice. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love that. Um, Oh, and speaking of that, because it's like the opening, this is just a fun little fact I like to share. So I think I told you this when we were watching it, Dylan, but the opening track of like it's like little kids like you know singing like a la 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 oh, track yeah. or whatever is used in the very first trailer for pet cemetery which it's a hundred and it's the legit trailer you can like actually i want to end up watching that that with you eventually just so you can like hear it i don't know if you'll remember exactly what it sounds like but it's the amity uh-huh. horror theme in a pet cemetery and it's funny because like they're like exactly 10 years apart amityville came out in 79 pet cemetery came out in 89 yet they used it for i maybe they 
the Mary Lambert or whoever was in charge of doing the trailer was like a fan of it and they didn't have the soundtrack made yet for Pet Cemetery. I always thought it was interesting. Even Ed noticed that he's like, why is Amityville right. in, in Pet Cemetery? Well, that's kind of – that's really cool and interesting because maybe like she or someone had – again, like you said, was a fan of it but that heard the music and wanted that particular – tone or uh right kind of atmosphere for pet cemetery so it was kind of a way to sort of which is interesting because the actual theme of pet cemetery with the the opening of uh, of the graveyard or the the pet cemetery whatever um it has little kids in it so maybe like somebody mm-hmm. whether it was uh what's his name elliot golden thought i don't want to say that wrong is that his yeah. name? the one who the composer for pet cemetery, pet maybe, cemetery. yeah yeah maybe he was a fan of it and that's why or maybe it was mary lambert maybe there were a lot of people i mean at the time, there wasn't a lot of, like, very eerie, slow horror movies like that, and maybe that was, like, one of the ones, and that, I think that they're very similar, at least with the pacing and the eeriness, right. and they're, they're both about these big house. even though Pet Cemetery is, the house itself isn't, quote-unquote, haunted or fucking with them, there's something just beyond the house, so I kind of like that sort of, so maybe there, there was some inspiration there, which is really cool, because they're two of my favorite horror movies, although one I'm completely obsessed with, and I need to stop talking about it, but... <laughs> But yeah, that's cool. I never thought about that. So maybe somebody was on board with like, hey, let's just and maybe that's like a a song that that was easy to get the rights to. I, I don't honestly remember who made Amity. I think it's MGM, isn't it? Did you see the lion roar in the beginning? Yeah. <laughs> OK, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't the same studio, but maybe they just had the they could easily get the rights to that song. Maybe there's no maybe they pulled a George Romero and forgot to copyright it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> start saying that from now on. Um, but that is cool. I always and that was like a little fun fact I had to share that because people probably know probably tired of how obsessed I am with Pet Cemetery by now, but that's fine. <laughs> that's fine, you know. If anybody ever we can figure out some official uh drinking game rules for the podcast, it'd be like anytime oh. we mention Resident Evil, anytime Pet Cemetery is brought up, anytime Donald Pleasant is brought up, anytime oh, Billy Cohen is brought up. Oh my god, yeah. I do talk. There's certain things that we do always find our way back to. I Anytime think Daniel Harris is brought up, I feel like I bring her up a lot. Oh, I love that. No, that's true. We should do that. Oh, my God. Do <laughs> our little drinking game to our own podcast. <laughs> that is fun. Oh, my God. But anyway, I don't know. I think um, next I would want to talk about, unless you have any point. I know as you're watching, things might come to you. So if you just want to spit something right. out, that's fine. Um, but I think next I want to talk about the actors, specifically Margot Kidder and James Bolin. I really I love Margot Kidder and I only ever have seen her in this. And then when you showed me the Halloween movies and she was like the the ther- was she like the Laurie's, therapist? Or- she was Laurie's therapist. And anytime yeah. we mention her in that movie, I, I love to point out and mention again how how you know kind of <laughs> jokingly mad you got when Laurie was yelling at her and you were like, you do not talk to Margot Kidder like that. <laughs> I just like she's a legend in the horror world. It's like- and she was fantastic. Like. Um, the version we watched was like the uh, Rob Zombie's director's cut. I think the, in theatrical, she has like t- one or two scenes, but she's on a, a little more of his director's That's cut, awesome. and she's great in her little role. See, um, and I, I, I don't even really remember because it's been a while since I've seen it, but I remember her and D. Wallace when I saw them. It was just like that was a really, really cool creative choice for him to include like these like legendary scream queens, if you will. And it's like, yeah. I, I've only ever seen Margot Kidder in Amityville, but I, she made such an impact on me that it's like, right. oh yeah, she's like a she's like a queen in the horror world to me. Even though oh, I, I can't she did Black wait, Christ- yeah, I, I know can't Black wait. Christmas. <laughs> um, I can't wait. Anytime we talk about Margot Kidder, I mention that. But Black Christmas will be a movie we're gonna watch very soon, so I can't wait for you to see well, her as the drunk, slutty sorority well, sister. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. I guess the, a question that you're going to end up asking me when we do that podcast, I'm going to ask you right now. Was it weird to see her go from that slutty character to this, like, caring, loving wife and mother? Or was it like she's just so natural that I guess you could believe it? But, I mean, was it kind of, like, weird at first? Probably at first, yeah. But at this point, I do believe it. she's just that – I mean, she's so real and natural in both I know. roles. Like, right. it's, it's believe both of them so much. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen Black Christmas in a long time, so that'll be fun again. So having just seen um, Amityville again, I'll again I, I, do Eric <laughs> Trask, but it'll be very fun. I know because I love that they're both obviously in the horror genre, but they're so different. The role because right. like to Black me, she's Christmas always... was early '70s, so it was before this. Before that, yeah, because she's just to me, she's always that that pretty sweet mom and wife character from from <laughs> Amityville. But it's gonna be so interesting to see her have <laughs> more. There's a layers. scene I vaguely remember in Black Christmas where there's like they go to the, a, a police station and she's kind of like 
telling off and being really rude or something <laughs> to a cop. I can't even imagine it. She's like so smoking sweet. a cigarette in his face. <laughs> um, well, on her too. There was a there's a line that I absolutely love, and I think I I said, oh, this would be me, um, uh, or whatever. I don't know if you remember the line. It's probably coming up. I don't know if you have subtitles. I think on, but... so. Um, wait, it's so cute. It's when she I do little... right now. They're having sex, so that's what's happening. Oh. <laughs> oh, there we and go. The kid walks in. <laughs> oh yeah, kid cough blocks. I think I said that. Um, <laughs> um, no, but there's a scene where they're like they're unpacking, and she's trying to put like she's trying to do something with the cabinets, like put put like some type of paper down in the uh. cupboards or, or something. I don't really know what she's doing. And then, um, James Brolin's character is like that's I think when he's <clears> hanging <throat> up the crucifix because she's like, oh, put it in there, and then he's like. You know, I have an idea or something like that. I forget what he says. And she's like, get a couple of beers and go outside and play. And I'm like, yeah, that was me. <laughs> she's like, doesn't want to be in the house anymore. I'm yeah, he's like, I also feel like you say that sometimes with Linda and Halloween. Go get me a beer. I thought you were going to yeah. get me one. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I said that when Ed and I were watching. And I'm like, that'd be me with you. And he's like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Anytime there's beer. But I love that because she's so cute. She has like the little pigtails and she's just, yeah. she's just so cute anyway. And then like. In the next shot, you see them walk outside with their two beers, and they're going out with the kids. And it's just like, I I say I say this a lot. I love horror movies when they have a family as at the center of the story. Those are like mm-hmm. usually always my favorite. I can name so many that have that, and I just think that makes it more realistic right. to me. That makes it more believable when things start to go down. You're like, holy shit! Right. You start to fear for the to, family. But to call back our dead end podcast, uh, I think that was one reason why you ended up you liked that because of the family. Yeah. Dynamic. Yeah, I, I remember that that was like, I think, an example I gave when we were talking to your brother. Or maybe you ended up saying it, but I think that's why I uh-huh. really liked that one. Obviously, Pet Cemetery is my all time favorite. favorite. That has a fam- big family core uh, as the center. Um, I know mm. there's another one. Amityville, obviously. Cujo, oh, Poltergeist. I think. Yeah, Cujo, Poltergeist. Like, these are all my, uh, the, even The Exorcist. Like, they're all my like, yeah. main favorites usually focus on. Uh, and it's funny because when you think when most people think of horror, I get or maybe people that aren't that familiar with horror like you and I are mostly think of like, oh, teenagers getting killed by somebody or whatever. Right. More or less, I would say those are like slasher than horror. But oh, even though I love a lot of them like Halloween and uh, Friday and um, Nightmare and all those. But I don't know. It's funny because to me, most of the ones I think in my top five too like center around a family. And I think that um, that's well, interesting. I, yeah, I remember this, too. This is also a slasher, but. The first one is very family centered, but Child's Play with Karen and his mom, uh, with oh, Andy and his mom. That's true. That's true. And I, I, I always like really liked the mom in in that one because she's like such like a believable, strong mom that like yeah, you know, fears I would for love her child. for her to come back in a sequel or something. I know she's great. She's a good actress, and I've really believed her as Andy's mom. Like I think when there's a a parental character or whatever that like really loves their kid and is so mm-hmm. like upset like even um when we do watch poltergeist again i can't wait to watch that one the mom right. the, well both the parents in that one like once carol ann spoilers like you already know this though goes missing within the house or whatever and it you just see it tearing them apart i just i don't know i just think that's so real and raw and especially when it has to do with a kid and maybe it's a callback to pet cemetery being my favorite and all the tragedy that happens with that with the family but it just mm-hmm. makes me like and yeah. i've said this before and not to get too personal but i'm extremely close to my family i'm very fortunate that i have two parents that are amazing um i'm very close with my siblings like we are just a very close close tight-knit family so i think that it affects me more when i see like tragedy and horror movies that have that because it's like holy shit i can relate to that like i love you know i don't have any kids that i've lost you know fortunately i've never had a child and lost them or whatever so i can't like directly relate to like lewis losing gage but i can relate that to losing family members of mine and it's or like thinking about mm-hmm. like and it's like holy shit like that's awful like i like movies that can do that and that's why i know i'm going off on a whole tangent we're gonna go back to amanito i swear but like it's all relatable um but yeah, I think that's why the family thing really gets to me and why it's more relatable than just a bunch of teenagers getting drunk, having sex and dying. Although those movies are great, too. They're fun. I yeah. absolutely adore Halloween. That was in my top five. But I think the family stuff always gets to me more. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm just like a sucker and I'm emotional and I love my family too much. But <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, that's why going back to Amityville, when they go out, when they have their beers and they go outside and you just see them on the boat and they're hanging out with the kids. And it's just like they have the, the dog. They have like everything. They just got married. They're like these this is attractive couple because I freaking Margot Cater. She is beautiful. I don't care. I am completely straight up <laughs> boyfriend. But there are certain females like that. I have like I guess I always call them my female crushes. It's like, yeah, that girl is, is hot. And Margot Cater <laughs> has always been one of the ones that I think is just super gorgeous. And I love James Brolin. 
Um, I think he's super attractive. And they, I think they just have really good chemistry in this. They seem like a real just married couple. Like they're so in love. Yeah. And that's why I think his his switch when it does start to happen, it's not drastic either. I think I told you this, that like I do love The Shining. So no shit. That's another one with a family uh, story. Um, oh, yeah. But The Shining – I absolutely adore Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. I'm trying. I'm not going to try to throw shade at it or anything. I know that there are people that are, you know, feel one way or the other about it. I know Stephen King's thoughts on it. We talked about all that. But for me personally, it's a movie I did grow up with. I love it. Is it faithful to the book? Not at all. Is it Stanley Kubrick's version or is it Stephen King's? It's definitely Stanley Kubrick's. But I love it. But I will say that I do agree with with uh, Jack and I love Jack Nicholson too. Again, I think he's a fantastic actor. I've seen him in almost everything that man's done. I've probably seen at least once. I love I love his acting. Um, but I do think the the spiral into him going going insane or whatever isn't portrayed particularly not not that it's like terrible and it's not believable, but I just think having I him think kind of I think it because of who he is and who they cast and what he yeah. did before that, it's yeah. maybe a little predictable. That's yeah, and I think well, I I I just watched it kind of recently, like back in October when Ed and I were on our horror movie kick. That was one of the ones we watched, and I was like, I was like, you know, this is a fantastic movie. It's shot beautifully. It's great, but Jack already kind of seems annoyed by his family from the beginning of the movie and onward. And even Ed agreed with that. Like there, I mean, there are moments even when they're driving up to the Overlook before they're even there, where he's like. Danny's asking him a question from the back and he just seems like he's like, like he's kind of like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like he's very with it with his family, even when he's supposed right. to be. So whereas I feel like in this, and I'm currently yeah. on a scene that speaks to that, um, his, the, I don't, I don't remember his name, but the father in this movie, George, George, George. Watson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, his sort of spiral is very slow and very meticulously like, yeah. Continuously, you know, devolving throughout the movie and because right. uh, the first is the the scene that just played i mean where he um and it's the first subtle scene where you notice something maybe is when he's chopping the wood oh yeah when she comes home and she has the groceries right yeah he has the groceries yeah and he's he's able to snap out of it i like that where I, again it's like almost of, like a little trance that's yeah. starting to grab him and then he feels kind of bad, you can tell, and he's, he kind of adds a little joke because she kind of looks at him, like, when he kind of, he says, don't ever do that, or what, she comes up behind him, and, like, I think she's supposed to, like, tickle him or grab, like, maybe she's yeah. being cute and grabs, like, his ass, I don't really know what she does, they don't show you, but <laughs> she does something, like, cute and flirty, and then he turns around with the axe in his hand, he's like, don't ever do that, and she's like, and she kind of gives him this look, and then he's like, not to a man with an accent, like, he tries to kind of smooth it, or it's almost like he can catch yeah. himself, at least in the beginning, before the, the bad spiral or whatever, but, um, I like that. I like that slow. It makes it more realistic. And he's like, he's a really good stepdad at first. He put, I think you just mentioned the scene where you see the little girl's hand in the box and he picks her up and he ta- he's like, I'll take her to bed uh-huh. or whatever. And he's yeah. just like this really nice guy at first. And then you just see this and that's what makes it more scary. And again, to talk about the remake, that was done a horror. The, the remake has absolutely no pacing. I think you said that when we watched it, like they jump. So they just, they just want to drive the horror so much that they make Ryan Reynolds, George, go completely nuts like right away like he his chop uh-huh. looks and he's like already being addicted to the kids and he's like i don't know i just ugh, that one and there's <laughs> uh, you know just briefly talk about that i think his portrayal is and it's common knowledge but it's it's very poor in that movie yes. like some of his delivery is a little off and you just and, you know i feel bad for ryan reynolds just because it's that's, yeah because he's a, a good actor very miscast yeah. role I agree. I, I I agree. He may have looked the part. He had like the the, the beard and the nice and he's nice looking, even, but that doesn't. Uh, <laughs> doesn't. But then there was a moment um, near the end of the movie where like he does something very horrible, and you mm-hmm. wondered like why why then would everything be okay afterwards? Because yeah, it, yeah. Because that it's like there's not enough of an establishment of the the house is doing this or whatever. It exactly. just seems like exactly. He's an he's asshole that's, like, up. losing it. Right, right, right. I agree. I think in this – I think we said that, that in, in the the original, the version you're watching now, it's, like, there's – it's very slow, and it's almost uh-huh. like Kathy knows that, yeah. that something's affecting him within the house yeah. or whatever. Even Whereas, though there are – well, <laughs> just quickly, even though there are scenes, um, and you, you said this, um, in the beginning of the remake where, you know, the dynamic of – and the chemistry with Ryan Reynolds and the family and the kids is really yeah, good. Yeah, it was then good, it goes yeah. straight to the other thing. I feel like that the middle, is like, I guess the transition is not yeah. there. I agree. And and you saying that like like and we can definitely talk about them as we start wrapping up and talking about the ending of both movies. 
there's so much bullshit that happens in the remake that I don't uh-huh. think Kathy as a protective mother, because Kathy in the in the original, and even at first in the remake, comes off as this very protective mother. Like, she loves George. You can tell how much she loves George, but her kids come first. There's even a, um, there's even, a, and I love the line, but there's a line from George um, where he's like, You're, th- these kids of yours need some goddamn discipline. And Margot Kidder is like, like, she opens her mouth to say something, and then she stops. Like, she's like pissed. She's like, you better not talk about my kids, but she doesn't really know how yeah. to react because, like, George has never... Uh-huh. reacted like that with her kids or whatever um so i just think that like margot kidder's kathy would put her kids before george she loves george but those are her kids and that's how any mother would i assume be but like yeah. in the in the remake she's kind of they cheapen kathy's character and they make her seem like just this dumbass it's just so in love with this hot ryan reynolds guy with his nice abs and they do focus on his abs a lot i make fun of that a lot of people make fun <laughs> of that it's like this movie's less about horror and more about ryan reynolds fucking abs because they show him so much but um um, I don't know. I just there's there's so many things that he does that it makes it like it makes Kathy a questionable mother in that one. Why she would want to stay with him right. afterwards. And we can definitely talk about all that. But I just think it's stupid and it makes her look like a dumbass, honestly. And she's just crazy in love. And it's like, no, kids, we just got to get him away from the house. He'll snap out mm-hmm. of it. But he does. Yeah, they take the psychotic thing and they go way too. But they, they like mesh the shining and the Amityville and it just didn't work like in the original, he is supposed to go slightly crazy and things are starting to fuck with him in the house. and He's not getting sleep and he does start to take it out on the family, but he doesn't go to the point where he does in the remake. And I think that was a really stupid choice because why then would the family just peacefully live on after this horrible experience? And I think even George Lutz, the real George Lutz, he is since right. passed away. I think both him and Kathy have passed away. Um, mm. But they both critiqued and hated the remake. And I think even tried to sue <laughs> the people that made the like because of how shitty it uh-huh. was, he was like it wasn't accurate at all. Um, but yeah, I guess like we could just go into one of the things that he does while we're kind of moving along in the story anyway. So, in the original, um, there's a big climactic scene at the end where George gets the families to safety. He drives like down the street a little bit, then he gets out and runs back towards the house because he hears the kids talking about Harry, which is the the family's dog. Which right. is kind of like a, his own little character in it. Like he's kind of scratching and barking at the thing in the basement. And he's playing with the kids early. Like he's like the family dog. And it's like, oh. Mm-hmm. And the kids are like, I want I want Harry or whatever. So George pulls over, runs back to the house, gets the dog. That's the happy ending of the original. So in the remake, and this is what really pissed George Lutz off, the real George Lutz. Um, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is George. Um, <laughs> he's starting to like he sees he has like a vision of something and he starts like just swinging the ax and ends up killing the dog because he thinks it's like something evil. I have no idea. He like wakes up in the middle of the night as George's character does in both versions. Like, I think it's like three 15 is the time. Cause that's like the time that the DeFeo kid like killed his whole family. So they always wake up at three 15 and he mm. goes outside. And for some reason, Harry turns into some monster in his eyes or whatever. And he just starts like swinging the ax and he kills the dog. Yeah, that's stupid. So what did you think when you saw that? Because, again, the whole ending of the original made this big deal out of going in and saving Harry, and which was awesome. And I love dogs. So woo-woo. but what do I you think? I think I think I think I, I think I also brought that up when that happened, like the whole scene of them turning around and go, making a point to go save the dog. And then the remake is just like, oh, I'm going to chop him to death. And then it's not a thing that's like important later to the family yeah. that he did that. Right. I, I, I just I just I feel like, like I said, the the remake did a very poor job at like presenting this as the house is doing this or whatever it right. like more or less just came off as he's crazy yeah and that's it it didn't it wasn't established enough that there's something yeah. else going on the only time i think you kind of get that is like kathy and george go on a date in the original they go like her brother kathy's brother has a wedding uh-huh. But even when they even when they're at the wedding, George is still not really feeling good. Like even when he gets away from the house, it's not it's still kind of affecting him because he hasn't been sleeping, whatever. But yeah. in the remake, the only time it's like implied that the house may have something to do with George's like mood is that they go on a date. Kathy and George, when the kids are left with that slutty babysitter that we can talk about, too. Um, <laughs> she, he says, you know, I feel a lot better. I think I just needed to get out of the house or something like that. And he's kind of going back to normal. But again, it's still it's like so drastic, too. He's like back to good guy. Ryan Reynolds. And as soon as they get home and they find out the babysitter was locked in the closet or whatever, when all that stuff happens, he's like he's all of a sudden just pissed off again. I don't I, there's no like you said, there's no middle part where there was a good transition to right. show. Except in the it's it's sad because I think when the movie opens the the remake, it had the potential to be a decent enough remake. Like the family has all this chemistry. The kids the older son doesn't really like Ryan Reynolds at first. It's like all oh, the stepdad thing. There's like some angsty stuff there. I like that. 
Um, mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds does great with his like chemistry with the the younger son. The younger son's like, do I have to call you dad? He's like, you know what? You can call me anything you want. Like, there's no pre. Like, he's like this like really nice, fun stepdad. And and I think the I don't know the actress's name, so forgive me, people. I should be more professional, but she and Ryan Reynolds even have really good chemistry. And then it just turns to shit as soon as the yeah. horror plot comes into it. So I don't know. They're I really- I feel like that it was just poorly written to the point where the, yeah they were just like they had they cast it well enough for that initial like the initial right. chemistry that works well. Right. And then there was like again nothing in between, and however you know the way it was written was just okay. Now you're crazy. Yeah, like, and they focused so much on him being nuts. There was nothing with the, with Father Delaney, who was a very important. Like there was there's almost two stories in Amityville. There's the main one, which is the focus on the family and George's kind of slip into semi insanity, whatever you want to say. And then there was Father Delaney dealing with this like what whatever happened when he went into that house and stuff so even to the right. point where like it's it's pretty drastic but they they end up having him go blind again i think that that stuff was dramatized for the movie i of course but uh-huh. it's pretty cool that it have not cool it's kind of fucked up but it's like an interesting story that it had it affect him to that degree like he's trying to bless the house even from the church and it's still fucking with him like it's making like the statue like break and 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 remember mm-hmm. i don't know if you remember this but it is kind of funny where like Father Delaney's like yelling the 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 prayer or whatever because the statue's breaking and it's getting into his head and the other yeah. the other priest keeps looking over and I'm like what the fuck is he yelling because he can't see the statue like breaking apart or he doesn't hear any of the stuff that the other guy's hearing so it's kind of yeah he didn't he didn't see any of that stuff yeah it's only affecting Father Delaney which is super cool and then when he has to argue with those priests that scene is very intense and I think that's one of the best displays of acting in that movie is when he's like what I saw there was real what I heard there was real and whatever yeah. what I and he's like just trying to get through their heads and they're like you think your scholar educator, whatever they say his educate. Cause he's also a, uh, like, I think licensed like psychology. He went to like school before he became a priest. And they're like, you think your education lets, it gives you the right to question the church. And I'm like, um, I think you and right. I both, when we saw that, we were like, yeah, <laughs> right. But, <laughs> uh, that seems good. Um, but yeah, there wasn't anything like that with, with him in the, in the remake. You were right. It's just so rushed. I think he's in two scenes. He's in the, scene where he comes to bless the house and then later on Kathy somehow is able to go sit next to him on a park bench outside the church and talk to him and he's like you need to get your family out of that house but there's nothing even affecting him mm-hmm. like uh, it's just I don't know I believe it more that it followed the uh, and he's so worried and like you said the, the connection between him and Kathy is so much better because she's supposed to have really known him and, and bonded with him and he's helped her through things before so that helps too they don't say anything about that in the remake i don't even think kathy's supposed to be like religious or or like a catholic or whatever she is in the original in the remake they don't mention that no it was probably just they probably they set it up in that as again like a cliche like oh weird stuff's happening i need a priest yeah yeah exactly (laughs) exactly um so yeah i don't know if you have anything else to add on the actors on that whole thing but i do have another subject i want to kind of segue into and then we can talk about the ending and final thoughts but there's one big thing i've been wanting to talk about it's like the juicy Mm -hmm. one to me no. So, <laughs> um, no, I think I know. It. No, I, I, not really, but I think I know what you're going to say or what you okay. want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my favorite thing about the original movie. And I think my least favorite and the most fucked up thing oh. about the remake. Hold on, sorry so. not to interrupt you, but no, you're fine. when things pop up as it's playing in the background, I do just want to say, I love the, um, and I think you said you like that, the, like the kids are a little more around more in the remake. Yeah, and a little more they developed. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. but there are scenes in the original and one just sort of flipped by that I I, I think they're the, the kids are funny and they're and they're enjoyable to watch. There was one scene that yeah. I remember now where the boys are like have like a fishing line out the window and they're a like little fake spider. Yeah, like a fake yeah. spider or whatever. <laughs> but, the, but the scene that just sort of flipped by was. The dog is barking at something, probably something oh, yeah. in the house. They're yeah, like tying the wedding cans to the car, and they yeah. and they tell him to be quiet. And then I don't remember what they said, but the second kid that yells like, "Shut up or go away!" Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's very realistic because they're like Harry, like they're like getting annoyed by him because they're trying to like. Cause I think that's when the um the brother their their uncle which is Kathy's brother is getting married so I think that's why they're tying the stuff to the to the car or whatever but yeah right. I remember you laughing at that and again you and I while we bond over things horror I think we have like a similar sense of humor too because little subtle things like that just make yeah. us laugh because I, I always 
laugh at that too. Like, yeah, the yeah. kids do have a, they have enough in the original where they're still, they have a presence, but I do like that they are a little more developed in the remake, but it's, it doesn't matter. Even their, their lines are good. Even the pinching thing, like when they don't want to go let their in, and she's always pinching, go and be polite. <laughs> like I love how Kathy has to scold them. <laughs> Um, and then I think you laughed at this too, speaking on the scene where they have the spider and they're kind of messing with their sister. Um, her name's Amy, the little girl, and she's like playing with her dolls or something. And she's like, I don't know if she's playing school and she's like a teacher or she's, or those are her kids. Like she's pretending they're her kids or whatever, but she goes, all right, now don't be a smart ass. Do you remember when she says that to her dolls? Like, it's, <laughs> I you, think so. You started laughing. She was like, she's like talking to her dolls and she's like, so what do you have to say, Susie or whoever, whatever doll she's talking to? And then she's like. Now, don't be a smart <laughs> I love that. And it, it always kind of makes me think, like, I again, I love family movies that kind of make you think of the dynamic more of the family. I'm always like, hmm, did she say that because, like, Margot Kidder's Kathy can sometimes cuss around her kids or something? And, like, I don't know. I just think of that. Like, maybe she learned it from her. Although Kathy seems like such a good religious mom when her kids are around. But I don't know. I just love right. that. Um, <laughs> but before I actually get to my main point I want to talk about, I forgot. We should talk a little bit about the differences from the remake to the the original to the remake, whatever, um, with the fucking babysitter, because I think that's a drastic oh, yeah. change, um, <laughs> which is funny. So in the original, we have like this sweet, like kind of nerdy looking girl with her big fucking headgear thing on. I was like, damn, yeah. her, is headgear really that bad in the 70s? It like goes around her whole face. Right. Um, right. And that and, whole scene was very, was it was kind of it was really creepy that when you know um, she gets sort of stuck in the closet, she's banging on the door, and like her knuckles and her fingers are starting to bleed. Because she's so scary, she's like pounding them. Yeah. yeah, and then when they come home and they the the daughter is still just laying in bed, and they ask why why didn't you let her out? And um, what's what's the, the oh Jody? Yeah, she Jody. says Jody won't yeah. let me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love, I've always, even as a kid, that scene always kind of, like, was just eerie to me that she gets locked in the closet and the light goes, and as soon as the light goes out, she, like, screams, so I don't know if she, like, saw something or if she just got really scared because the, it got really dark or whatever, but, um, and it's more believable that she's, like, this little, like, sweet kind of, like, nerdy little girl or whatever, the, the babysitter, because when she does get locked in there, like, you really are, like, holy shit, because, like, that's why I think it works better that she's so scared because it's like, oh, she seems like this little vulnerable, like nice mm -hmm. girl. And like when she gets locked in there, she gets kind of freaked out. Um, and there there was a couple of scenes we didn't really mention because I want to I the, the big thing, the, the big reveal I want to talk about in a minute is Jody and the differences from the remake to the original or right. whatever. Um, but I remember some scenes that you were like, oh, that was pretty cool. How like the rocking her rocking chair in Amy's room will be rocking. But when the parents, I think Margot Kidder walks into the room and it's yeah, I like those a lot. Yeah, there's little scenes like that. Or there's a really creepy scene in the beginning, I think you already passed it, where George uh, puts Amy to bed and you hear um, you hear Kathy say, D did you make sure she had her doll with her? And he was like, yeah, it's right next to her in bed or whatever. And then when he goes to check on her later, though, it's like sitting in the chair just staring. And it's a creepy yeah, yeah. ass, like Raggedy Ann doll. It looks like it went through like a fucking fire. It's all burned. It looks like it looks really <laughs> weird. Like Raggedy Ann dolls are usually, they have like bright red hair and everything, but it's like dark looking and creepy. Yeah. And it's just sitting there staring at him in the chair, which is really creepy because that's like where she sits or whatever, which is super creepy. And, but then to compare it to the remake, I know there was one scene. It was very early on, like 10 minutes into the movies. And that, at that point, I was like, OK, they're moving way too fast. With yeah. This. Mm -hmm. Like the mom comes into the room and it's the daughter. And then like it just there's like some like swoop of the camera. Or you see it immediately shows Jody, who's of course looks like a scary like the gr like grudge or the ring yeah. girl. Yeah, and, like and then and like, long hair. and then it, you know, and then there's a shot where she looks into the chair where she was, and she's not there, and it's like they like really played their hands way too fast in that movie. I agree, I agree, and and um. And why give it away so soon when you're the execution of it that you're attempting yeah. is very piss poor. Well, I agree, and I think um this was something I did want to save, but I guess since we're already kind of on it. I love how there's no reveal of what Jody technically looks like or what she actually is until like a while into the movie. Like you just keep hearing Amy talk about her, like my friend Jody, my friend Jody, my friend Jody. And even when um uh, Kathy asks like, what does she look like? Is she like thin or fat or big or little? Like what is? She? And she's like, she's nice. That's all Amy says. Like there's no description of her, which again is more eerie to me because she's not like, oh, she looks like me. She's a little girl. Like, she doesn't say anything about what she actually looks like. But then when the rocking chair is rocking and Kathy walks into the room and then it stops abruptly, Kathy asks Amy, like, who are you talking to, princess, or who are you, speak or who are you singing to? I think she was singing. And she's like, you scared Jody." And then she's like, she went out the window. And remember, oh, my God, that scene 
is done so practically and it's probably done so cheaply and yet it freaks me out. It's like when Kathy goes over to the window, she sees those two mm. red like blinking yeah. like their their eyes, but they look like oh it's so freaky and it's so practical. Even Ed, who doesn't get scared by anything, you know, whatever would I would I I actually thought he was gonna make fun of that scene like that was so cheaply looking, but he actually when he we were watching it together, he was like holy shit, that's really creepy. It's just the way that it's shot. And then yeah. it just, it blinks for a second and then just goes, it just looks like two red eyes, but they kind of look like lights. And then it, oh, and then it like looks like it runs off or something. Oh my God. It's so creepy. Mm-hmm. Again, I love no, I remember effects. that. <laughs> no, I remember that. That was very creepy. And that was, I guess, yeah, I assume the first sort of glimpse Glim- at yeah. Jody. Yeah. And then, I mean, I don't know if you'd want to jump to that three yeah, second can, shot of her later just because yeah we're that was on my the... big reveal <laughs> that um, was probably my favorite and the... i mean i did want to say this like longer but <laughs> yeah but i kind of like that it wasn't yeah um, it leaves more to the imagination but i did want to say this like i'm glad you're showing me movies like this because um there are certain subgenres, and we talked about this in the Fright Night podcast, mm-hmm. that I'm not big into or I don't see a lot into for one reason or another. And right. uh, this, I feel like, is one of those subgenres as well. Like, I guess you could call it like a haunted house ish movie. Right. Movie, right. And I'm not too big into those either. So I, I think it's very interesting to that this was one of your picks too. It is so classic, and I had seen it before, but just, just for that reason as well. But, um, right. Uh, but no, I think that, I mean, there's so many subtle, creepy moments throughout the movie, but I think the only, the only one that really got me and mm-hmm. it was the three seconds was Jody when she's the, yeah. the, like she's... the flashes of her in the window. It was yeah. just like, it was the only moment in the movie where it like kind of got under my skin and it was like, Oh, that's fucking creepy. And I want to see it again. And I want to <laughs> see more of it, but I kind of don't because I think the fact that it is so quick and it is like, it's so yeah. quick and you don't, you can't really quite make out what it is made it yeah. very unsettling and under your skin and i really really liked that like a lot uh, that that's moment what I think is so unique about this movie is like they they only show you i guess jody could be cons- even though the whole house fucks with george and it's not just i think one entity or whatever you want to call it but i think jody i guess could be named as like the main i guess antagonist of the movie because she's the only one with a sort of name sure. um, but although i just i do believe that just the way the movie is structured and, and, and whatever. I do think there are supposed to be like multiple things just going on at, at, in the house. It's not just one thing, but mm-hmm. Jody is definitely like, and it's the only thing we really get a face to. And I love that this movie, I think it's very different for a, a quote unquote haunted house type movie too, because haunted house movies, a lot of the time are objects just moving around or like, or sometimes, or most of the time, especially in newer ones, the house is haunted and somebody ends up getting possessed. Like in this movie, it's just all right. super subtle and things that could potentially be believable. I mean, like I said, they go over the top sometimes, but like a lot of the things in this movie could potentially be believable. And the Lutzes did write it and say they experienced all of it. So it's like when you, when you see Joe, well, the first time you see her is like what we were just talking about out that window. And then later on, when you hear her say to George, what I saw was not a cat. And I'm like, that's so creepy that like she even told George and she's so freaked out by what she saw and she has to like, kind of like explain it to him. And he's like, Oh, I could have climbed up the Ivy and been, and she was like, it wasn't a cat or whatever. Like it's so, oh, it's so creepy. Cause you don't yeah. know what the fuck it was. But like, I always wonder how she describes it to George. Cause you, you don't see that. It just cuts into the scene with her saying it. What I saw was not a cat, but I wonder how like she explained that. Like, yeah, I saw these two fucking eyeballs after, after <laughs> Amy told me Jody went out the window. Like it's just, and it's, it's shot so practically. It literally looks like, like maybe like flashlights with like a red bulb in them kind right. of like blinking for a second but and then it move you see something kind of move like it, right. it it moves out of once Kathy catches a glimpse of it it looks like it like runs away but i remember you saying this too like she's on like the top floor so like where was they how was it just chilling on the roof like what what was she actually yeah, just like, floating like it's so right, creepy right. i love that i like that um, that's all you saw was like the flash of the eyes cuz i feel like if they had shown more it would have been yeah Maybe not as effective and maybe a little cliche, but the fact that that's all you see was very, very effective. Yeah, that's so different than any horror movie made today. They always feel, and uh, speaking on the remake, so um, I guess I wanted to talk about the babysitters before we kind of went into Jody, but this kind of goes hand in hand in the remake. There's a stupid ass scene in the remake. We were just talking about how good the closet scene is in the original with the babysitter and you, you really feel for her and when you start mm-hmm. to see the blood and how much she's really trying to get out, it's so scary. 
Um, but in the remake, of course they have to over sexualize or she comes in. Who would leave your kid, honestly, though, when she walks in with that shirt? It's not even a shirt, it just covers her boobs. It's almost like she should just wore a bra. <laughs> her whole stomach is sticking out. She's got like these like like real tight jeans on. She almost looks like and she's like all this makeup pile on her face. She looks like kind of like a stripper. And then she's like smoking weed in like the bathroom. And maybe they were trying to give her a little bit more of something than just oh, she's just the babysitter or whatever. So you know, guess you can give them effort for trying, but it's so cliche that she's like just this like and she's the one that she starts telling all the kids about like the murders that had happened in there previously or whatever. And then do right. you remember like what happens when she's in the closet? It's so dumb. It's like one of my biggest things um, about the, the remake. Specifically, I guess not, but I, 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 I will remember it as soon as you say it. Well, so they dare her to go in the closet and she's like, I think she says to the oldest son or whatever, like, Oh, will you give me your kiss poster? Cause they were talking about kiss previously. Right. And he was like, sure, or whatever. So she goes in. But yeah, Jody ends up, and apparently, this is not mentioned in the original, but in the remake, the babysitter actually babysat for the DeFeo family, too. So she actually knew them, like she knew. Right. And in the original, Jody's spirit, or whatever you want to say, has nothing to do with the DeFeo. It's not, so, it, but in the remake, they make Jody one of the DeFeos. Like Ronnie killed Jody, it was his younger sister, and that's why she now haunts the house. Which, okay, whatever. I, I kind of like Jody just being, you don't really know what the hell it, I don't even want to say uh-huh. she, because you don't know <clears throat> what it actually is in the original, which makes it scarier. The fact that she was like, oh, the murdered little girl, it's just very cliche. Um, right, but to not know what it is, just to think it's presenting itself as like maybe a little girl to, to be friends. It. Yeah, yeah that, which is so creepy. I, I feel like it could turn, maybe to Amy it doesn't look as scary, because I, I feel like if that thing came to a little girl, she'd probably be like, get the fuck away from me. So maybe to Amy it does look like a little girl, but like, we don't see that. It presents itself as what, I don't even know what, it, we're going to talk about what people say it is when, you know, when we get there. But to go back to like the scene in the remake, um, so the the babysitter knows the, the DeFeo, or knew the DeFeo family, and I think she even says something about Jody, yeah, that little shit got me fired or something like that. So there's like some spite there, whatever. I don't know. And then um, <laughs> how she has any references to get another babysitting job, I don't know. I know, right? <laughs> That's true. Um, well, then Jody appears to her while she's in the closet, which I like in the original. Again, it's subtle. You don't see what happens. You don't really see what happens that really freaks the babysitter off. She ends up uh-huh. the light goes out. She she screams, and then it just jumps to like I guess the parents coming back home or whatever. I forget. Um, but in this one, they, they always got to go overboard. Uh, Jody appears to the babysitter and goes, look what, uh, look, whatever her name. I don't know if I forget her name. She's like, look what Ronnie did. And she like shows him, she like pulls her hair aside and there's a big bullet. Hole oh in her yeah. Head before, yeah. Yeah. And she takes her fit. I think this is so, this isn't even scary or has, I just don't know what they were thinking when they were like, okay, now the little ghost girl's going to take the babysitter's finger and jam it into her freaking bullet hole head. Like what, how is that? <laughs> It's kind of gross and like weird, but it's not, it's, it makes it goofy and dumb. She takes her hand and literally put it and she's like, here you go. And like puts it in her foot. Oh, it was so dumb. And then the babysitter of course freaks out. I think she has to be taken by an ambulance because she's like in shock, which doesn't happen in the original either. In the original, they just open the door and the babysitter gets kind of aggressive and says to Amy, like, why didn't you open it? And she's like, it wouldn't open. And it's just, again, much more realistic, not so Mm -hmm. drastic that she had to be picked up by an ambulance and she's in shock now and she's shaking and she's like ruined for life. It's just like so over the top in the in the in the remake. But what did you think when you first saw it? Because I remember saying, oh, here comes one of the dumbest scenes. And I shouldn't have probably even forewarned you, but I just wanted like (laughs) to know your react. Like, I just can't believe that they actually shot something that ridiculously stupid. Maybe I'm the only one that thinks that's that dumb. Like, I I don't know. I vaguely remember that scene. And I'm just I like, yeah, I don't understand what they were thinking either. Like, they thought it was (laughs) creepy. They thought it would be gross. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Look what Ronnie did. (laughs) It's like, what the fuck? And like, Jody just the fact that they show her so much and she looks like she does so much just... yeah yeah because it came out around the time that the grudge and, and the ring were big and a lot of movies kind of followed that japanese style ghost girl with like the pale face and the long hair and that's fine because i love the right. ring and i've seen the grudge once i don't really remember a lot of it but i remember that right. being pretty good too but when it started then... to just be overdone and ugh, i hate it in this movie how they made her yeah look. yeah i say me too i think um was was that moment in the closet was was it one of was that one of the moments um that we've c- kind of coined it, a, a dumb waiter was that a dumb waiter oh yeah i think i think when we <laughs> 
when we started the movie, we said something like that. And I said, yeah, well, there's a lot of dumb waiter moments. And I think I may have said that to you. Or maybe we were even drinking. And I'm like, I was like, every time something really dumb happens, we have to drink. Yeah. Which we do to a lot of dumb And just to explain <laughs> what, what we mean when we say, was that a dumb waiter? Oh, dumb waiter. <laughs> um, it's a it's a it's a term Brandy and I have started to use to um, explain something that's very stupid and very dumb, Outrageous. and it came from it, and it came from the Zelda's death in the Pet Cemetery <laughs> remake, which was one of the dumbest things I've seen in any movie I've seen yeah. recently. That's so true. So, so if you ever that. wonder what we're talking about when we say was that a dumb waiter or that's yeah. a dumb waiter, you know that's, that's what, what we're it means. Say. <laughs> Well, I think that was the biggest dumb waiter moment for me was when she sticks her finger like, in that bullet hole. It's yeah, so dumb. <laughs> I think another dumb waiter moment was when um, the daughter was on the roof and everyone's climbing on the roof to get her or whatever. Oh, my God. Yeah. How, first of all, like, that's so stupid. She's like, I got to go with Jody. It's so cliche that, like, you know, and it's, it's just something to add to the big scope of, look what we can shoot now in 2005 versus 1970. It's just so unnecessary. Uh-huh. Like. Jody does, uh, or not Jody, uh, Amy, which is the little girl character. I think they change her name randomly in the remake to Chelsea, is, and she's played by Chloe Grace Moretz, which is funny because I mentioned how she's always in horrible remakes. Um, I think she's in that. She's in the Suspiria. I've never seen Suspiria, the original or the remake, but I think right. she's in that remake. She is in the she's remake. She's obviously yeah. in Carrie, and she started off in Amityville. So, but it's like the character, all the other characters are supposed to be just like normal. Like the, the only one that really gets affected, at least in his mind, by the house is George, and it's like. Why the hell does Chelsea go up on the roof and say, I got to go with Joe? Like, she's in, like, this trance. I, I, It's just, it's dumb. It, it's, yeah. it's, like, it, she just, that whole thing was just, I think, was just a thing like, oh, look what we can shoot. Like, because like, they, sh- it looks pretty realistic that she's up on a giant roof, whatever. I think that was just to, like, oh, we can shoot this, so let's just do it. We have all these effects. Like, I don't know, it was dumb. Mm-hmm. Um we for, we didn't really talk about that scene, but that's really dumb, and that's not something that happens at all in the original. They really don't do a lot with Amy, except that yeah, she does talk to this like spirit or whatever, and that's basically it, and that's fine. I mean, like I said, the kids have a s- little bit more of a presence in the remake, which I like. Right. But at the same time, I did enough. kind of like in the because in the original, the scene with the babysitter, you know, the daughter um, sort of just said Jody would let me or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of like in the remake that it's it kind of comes across as. The daughter, you said her name was Chelsea in the remake. Yeah. She, it kind of came across to me in the remake that she just really disliked that babysitter and like maybe ha- asked yeah. Jody to do that. Yeah, because she says, uh, "Don't go in there. You're gonna make her mad." And she doesn't like you. She says you're a bad babysitter. Yeah, she has like some, yeah. like an attitude towards her, which is fine. And yeah, they, but all the the weird thing is like in in the original, only Amy needs a babysitter because she's been sick, so she can't go to Kathy's brother's wedding. But the boys go. But in the remake, all the kids are home Mm -hmm. and the babysitter gets locked in the closet and the boys are trying to, like, get the door open or whatever, but they can't. And I don't know. It's just. Right. That scene is just so over the top. The the babies, the whole the whole thing from when the babysitter arrives to, like, when she gets her (laughs) freaking finger put into this little (laughs) ghost girl's head. It's just so dumb. Um but the whole reason it's so dumb, it, it may be, I would think that'd be a stupid scene anyway. Even if there was no original and this was just a horror movie I was watching, I would think that scene was so ridiculous. I'd be like, what the hell were they trying to go for? Were they trying right. to go for a gore thing like I, you said and gross you out? Or was it supposed to be scary? That's not scary. That's just Yeah. I, well, <laughs> another moment, Jody moment from the remake that I thought was incredibly dumb. Which might even have been like the last shot of the movie where it like goes back into the house and it just shows oh, her like leave. standing at the stairs or something. And then she screams or and something. And then she. She's pulled under she's pulled into the ground and I was like, yeah. Oh my god, that's so fucking stupid. It was so cliche. Like her face, like she starts her face starts freaking out and screaming like it's all CG'd and then yeah, she gets pulled into it's so dumb. And it's like they had to show that I guess to be like, Oh, she's like sad now that Chelsea or the whole family left, but it, it's just I mean it's like you don't really like in the original Jody's again, and the entity, the spirit of Jody is supposed to be a negative one, I guess. Like she she appears to Amy, I think, as, like, a kid and as, like, a friend to sort of, again, affect the family, whatever. She's, like, she, she, or, I don't even like to say she, I say it, even though it has a female name, I think it's, it's not really, I don't know, it's creepy, and I like to kind of just say it, because you don't really know what the fuck it actually is, which is, makes it creepier. It's supposed to be just, like, this negative sphere that I guess is trying to get to the, to the little girl, but in the remake, it's, like, and they keep going back and forth, it's, like, okay, is she, like, a sympathetic 
character, the little ghost girl? Like, do you, are you supposed to feel bad for her because she got killed by... There's even a shot of her when she's still alive in the beginning when Ronnie's going around the DeFeos. Like, in the, in the original, it's just... You, you just see a gun go off and you see them all die in bed or whatever and then it, it cuts to like the the newscast of like you know family murdered in their home whatever oh yeah the, the remake, remake was it was very flashy and it was very like you yeah, know like the you way the beginning was like, shot. um where's like the warning that's before every video game like people photosensitivity and like oh I believe, yeah, <laughs> it was like flat yeah it was like shot very flashy with like i guess the thunderstorm and it's like and then there's even a scene where, like, Jody before she's a little ghost girl, she's a regular little girl, and she's, like, hiding, and then Ronnie goes in, and I don't know if they're trying to make you feel bad for her or whatever, or, like, like sympathize with her, but then, like, she's, like, a she's, like, an asshole, though, when she's a ghost. Like, she fucks with the babysitter. She has uh, Chelsea go up on, like, the roof. It's, like, is she supposed to be somebody you feel bad for? Because she's, like, a, a little girl that was murdered, and she just wants, like, a friend or whatever, or is she just, like, uh -huh. an, like and it, I hate that whole angle because it's, like, Again, in the original, it was so creepy that it was just a thing that was like an evil entity that was part of the house. But it just befriended Amy, I guess, because like she's the vulnerable little girl and it's preying upon that. Like that's more creepy to me than just like, well, she died in the house and now she's kind of a spiteful ghost. But only to certain people like the babysitter who she didn't like and she tries to get like a, a five year old girl to commit suicide by jumping off. Like, I don't know. It's just like there's no it's confusing <laughs> what like they actually tried to do with Jody and that like I don't know if you're supposed to feel bad for because in the beginning she's like what's wrong, Bronny? And he's like, I love you, Jody. And he just shoots her. It's so movie and cliche again, but yeah, I don't know. But, um, but moving from complaining all about the bullshit, Jody and the remake. <laughs> now I want to finally get to my favorite part of Amityville horror and the original, um, is Jody in the original. And we've obviously hinted at, at, well, at uh -huh. least what I think it is like how it's just like this evil part of the house that preys upon Amy or whatever. I don't think it's the only entity or spirit or whatever that's that's fucking with George within the house, but I, it's, like, a big thing, and it's the only right. thing that's sort of, like, personified with, like, a name or whatever. Um, but later, So we see it that first time with where you just see the eyes and a little bit of movement outside the window when Kathy sees it, but then later on, best scene ever because it's so fucking creepy and weird. And again, another scene where Ed saw that and was like, what the fuck? And I mm -hmm. want to know how they shot that. It almost kind of looks like sort of like a, a it's like some it's like floating and i'm like is that like a balloon like how did they they had to do yeah. it practically so i don't know how they did it but and and basically george is walking towards the house at the very end of the movie when shit's like going down or whatever and george is walking towards the house and he happens to look up and he sees in i guess it's amy's window um like this floating pig thing uh -huh. which it's so weird to describe it like that but that's like what it is it's like a demonic pig and it has the red glowing eyes that we had previously seen when Kathy saw it those big red glowing eyes but it resembles mm -hmm. like a pig it has like a creepy snout and like this weird hair like thing on its head I don't even know but I can see it in my head and it's so creepy and yeah. I don't know if you like have like a vivid memory of it or maybe when I was talking about it you can kind of see it because it's so it happens so mm -hmm. fast yeah. that you barely can catch it but if you like google like Jody pig on <laughs> yeah on google you can get like more still shots of it but what did you think of that? Because that's my absolute favorite shot in the movie. I think it's so creepy and well done the way it goes. I kind of sometimes wish it stayed on the screen longer, but at the same time, like you said, it's kind of cool that it goes by so fast because you're uh -huh. you're almost like it's almost like if you blink, you miss it. And you're like, what the fuck did I just see? It like really yeah. fucks with your your well, that's head. Yeah, well, that's sort of what I said before. Like <clears throat> why it was the moment in the movie that got me the most because it was something that your brain you don't you know d doesn't immediately recognize and you're just like what is that and the fact yeah, that it, it is so awful. quick <laughs> the fact that it is yeah. so quick just leaves your mind to just sort of continue to think about it and continue to wonder what it is and you can't you don't have a solid image on it which is why right. like i said after we watched it i was like i was very curious like what it to see it again but then yeah. i was like no but i kind of don't want to i kind of want to <laughs> keep that like, like what mystery. the fuck is yeah. that I would just like to try to slow it down and figure out how the hell they shot that. Cause again, there was no CG at the time. I don't know if it's like a puppet cause the way that it kind of is floating, it almost looks like a, it, it floats like balloon. Like some always like, is it like a puppet? It's probably, I mean, it's gotta be done practically obviously, but I would love to like actually see how they shot it. Cause it looks super creepy mm -hmm. and even like the coloring on it and everything. It just looks, yeah. Oh, it's so, it's so scary. And the eyes are big and red and just, it's like people describe it as it's supposed to literally be like a demonic, pig that comes into the form of a pig i don't know if that's what's been appearing to amy though that girl is brave because if that thing appeared <laughs> and was sitting in my rocking chair like that's why i just 
assume you don't ever know or figure it out, but maybe it appears as a little girl to Amy to like right. not freak her out. But then at the same time, when Kathy asks what what Jody looks like, she doesn't really give a full answer. So maybe she's like, oh, she's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I, yeah. I just love that. And I love how George is, is the only one that ends up seeing it because the house is is fully gotten into his head and it's like it's pre- now presenting itself fully to him like even though kathy saw just the the eyes in the earlier mm-hmm. scene like george seeing it all fully i like i do like that it's so oh that's definitely my favorite shot in the movie and i agree with everything you said about your i think your brain doesn't know what to make of that at first that's why it's so scary i think i just said this to you before things that just look sort of off that aren't directly like that's why they ruined Jody so much in the remake to me because she's supposed to be this little creepy ghost girl and that's so creepy. That's a, that's not creepy to me. Like it depends on the, and the fact that the they is good, but yeah. Well, just like I said earlier, and the fact that she is completely given away ten minutes into the movie. I know, right? And it's like, and there's nothing special or unique about her design. It's literally just a little pale ghost girl with long hair and oh, with a bullet hole in her head. Like that's not scary to me and i know at at that time that was a big thing that was like very scary in the whole because of the ring and the grudge and in the ring it's done very very well because i just love the story and in the ring it works for the story reasons but in this it's just like they changed something that was so unique about the original that really did when you look at it just made you get that eerie goosebumpy sort of feeling and it's kind of like what i get when i see zelda because when i you know when you first see zelda specifically when you first see her in her um her the scene where she dies like the one where it's the flashback and rachel's mm-hmm. eating her and everything you, there's just something so off looking about her that you're just like oh like that's so like creepy and like i feel like the same thing could be said when you do when you finally get the reveal of jody because it's just like oh my god what am i looking at like that looks so off and so creepy yeah. and so weird that it's like i like things like that that kind of make your mind like question what the hell you're looking at because it's i mean just seeing a little ghost girl that's not scary that's not something right. that looks I'm, well i think that's i think that's uh Speaking of Zelda, that's why Zelda is so effective and remains so effective to everyone who watches Pet Cemetery to this yeah, day because exactly. of the ingenious casting of, of a man. Um, it, yes. it, it, it does the same thing. It, it, and even, even us knowing the fact of who plays him, her, yeah. doesn't, doesn't change that. But it, it's the same thing where you're, you're, it's off in such a way that it, it, you know, your mind is... It trying doesn't, to figure out what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or trying and to figure out why it looks, yeah, like why that. it looks off, and even we know why it's yeah. still it's still the same kind of kind of thing. That's why yeah, it's still effective to this day. Yeah, there's an actual like word for that. I forget what it, I watched a whole thing on YouTube of this guy talking about horror videos and why certain things are scary to certain people. It's like when your brain is like, I think I sent you a video and I won't get too into it because we're doing a podcast, but a long time ago I said, Dylan, I'm going to send you a video that's really weird, but I want you to tell me if it makes you laugh, freaks you out, or kind of, you just feel kind of indifferent towards it. I don't know if you remember Hmm. that, but it was a long time ago. It was like a viral video that was going around on YouTube that scared the shit out of a lot of people, but also some people found it. Like there's the comments were like mixed. Like it was like, this is stupid. This is making me laugh. Ha ha. But then there were so many people saying it was disturbing to me. It came off disturbing because the part of my brain that was like, this just looked off and wrong. Cause it was like, I don't know. I'm going to go that much into detail about what it was about, but just so, cause we're doing a podcast to give people context. It was like this, this, little like like midget guy that do you remember this that was kind of dancing around in a very i don't remember uh, it sounds really I, weird when i'm describing it but that's what it was it was so creepy i did send it to you and you said you watched yeah you saying it, it did kind of creep you out too because i think you and i have that same thing in our brain where we're like ooh, I, we just don't like things that look super awful it's like and if anybody wants to know you can youtube it the video is called obey the walrus it's very very strange some dude made it like to be i guess edgy and creepy but and it's been mm-hmm. debunked it's just like this fake video or whatever but it's very very creepy and it has creepy music playing in the background which also makes your brain sort of like go like "Ooh, what am i listening to i think it just depends on how you're kind of like wired like and some people were saying it was the funniest thing they ever saw like the way that he's dancing around but it's like but he's like he's apparently he's like a short like midget guy that has like he had like he was diagnosed with like polio so he and it's it's actually kind of sad when you hear the backstory of it but just seeing it and he kind of and he's he's it's weird I don't it's very very weird I, I don't even want to keep explaining because I think people just need to see it but it's really weird but that there's there's some sort of word for what we're both describing that that when you just see yeah. something that looks off and doesn't look normal it can freak you out because it's like it, that's not the and that's that's what scares me more than just seeing a pale little ghost girl like yeah that can be creepy or whatever but 
that's a that's a certain type of creepy. The type of creepy that Jody is in the original, or Zelda is, or even this mm-hmm. weird video that I'm, I've been watching. <laughs> it's like that's a, a whole different type of horror that can give you like goosebumps because they just don't. It just does not look the way that right our, our brains think normal it's... like a normal thing should look or whatever. If that makes yeah. sense, I'm horrible at describing no. it, but. <laughs> no, it does. I feel like it's even brought up by um, the people who make the Child's Play movies. I think I think it's I've heard them say that like that dolls are similarly similarly have that kind of effect on your brain because yeah. they look human enough but not completely. Yeah. So that's yeah. why they're creepy to a lot of people. That's actually really true. I think I've heard that too. Like that's why they're effective in the horror horror world because of that. Yeah. That's true. And the more realistic looking, the more like like creepy or or like when they were there's like those videos of them developing like robots and stuff and when they look really real but but they're not like and there's just something Mm. off about that i've heard people talk about that too like robots that look human but you obviously can tell in their face that they're really not it's it's creepy to some people it's just there's all different types of stuff like that 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 type of stuff always scared me more than just like again a little ghost girl or or just something that's supposed to be scary like Mm. zelda is not i mean she's obviously in the movie she's creepy as hell but i think in that first scene like it's tragic it's sad she's not even evil yet like obviously yeah. things later on in like the dream and then when she appears to rachel she's supposed to be creepy in those but that initial scene where she dies is it's it's supposed to be like a tragic and also scary scene because obviously mary lambert is a genius and knew what she was doing but when you think about it it's like oh she's not even evil there yet but there's still something so creepy about her in her death scene She's not even after Rachel yet. She's not even like this demonic spirit yet that's coming back to haunt Rachel. She's just this little girl that got this disease, but it's just the way that she looks. And it's like, and again, I'm going so over the top and and, and dragging this on like I always do, but getting back to like, that's why the Jody change really, 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 really was my biggest complaint um, next to Ryan Reynolds being cast. I know that's terrible. He's a great actor, <laughs> but I, he was just not, did not fit that role, like you said. No. Um, but Jody's change really pissed me off because it was so unique in the and I would I would hope I was hoping when I went into the the remake and I was a lot younger when I saw the remake too because I saw it when it first came out and we were like 10 or something when it came out so I mean but I I remember going into it thinking like oh maybe you know with the effects of whatever it'll be really cool to see how they handle Jody and of course they just completely maybe they thought it would be dumb or nobody would or people would be confused by it if they didn't make it more of a humanoid thing. Like, I, right. I don't know. I just think that that's, I don't know. Yeah. I, I love the original. That I think that's so creepy. Everybody go Google Jody Pig Demon <laughs> in Amityville, <laughs> and you can see what we're talking about. It's very, very unsettling to look at. But only look at it for five seconds and then get rid of it yeah. and, then, and then have your mind continue to try to piece yeah. it together. That's what's cool. But, yeah, they, they, they show it. And then it cuts to, to George kind of squinting his eyes and then it, they show it again a little bit up close and then it's done. It's like literally on the screen for maybe four seconds. And I mm-hmm. agree with you, Dylan, as much as I'm like, no, I want to see more of it and figure out what the hell it is. I think that is the genius of it, too, that makes it effective. Is It's like you only see it for boom, one second and then it's gone. So, yeah, I love that. Um, but, yeah, I guess that's all I really have to say about it. I wanted to save Jody for last because that's like my absolute favorite and I was so excited mm-hmm. to get to that scene with you watching it to see how you would sort of react. Yeah. And I was very, I guess I could say, like, happy with your reaction because you were like, whoa, that is really creepy. <laughs> and, and I know yeah. I kind of spoiled it in the podcast with your brother. I was like, because him and I were talking about it. And I was like, the fact that she's like a weird pig demon. And I'm like, oh, Dylan, then <laughs> you didn't hear that. And it probably sounded so d- When you say it like that, it sounds kind of dumb. But when you actually see it executed in the movie, yeah, I think I, I anything kind of but that. My head. I picture in my head the the weird, uh, scary stories story about like the two oh. fat people and, and one of them gets reincarnated as a pig yeah, with like goofy. flow, like high heels or something. That's kind of what I pictured. Yeah. But if that had been, think about it, if the, if it had been shot differently or it, there, it could, it could have been so different that it may not have been effective and it may not have worked and it may have came off kind of goofy and stupid. When you think of like a pig demon, like, yeah, that could have went so bad, especially at the time when they, they had to just do it practically and for the time and for what they were going for, I think it's super effective and it looked really, really, really good. Like, it yeah. didn't come off cheesy or goofy. Like, what is this weird pig? It's so creepy when you see it. And again, it has that thing where your brain's trying to be like, what am I looking at? Where yeah. it's just very, very effective. I would love to see how they shot that. I might look that up after we're done. <laughs> this podcast to <laughs> see. Um, but yeah, and I'm glad you agree. That was one scene I was yeah. like, I really hope Dylan has a good reaction to this. And you did. And 
Ed was the same way, and I was very surprised. I thought he was going to be like, oh, that, what is that? But, like, he was like, that's really, really creepy. So I think it still holds up. I mean, maybe a lot of newer horror fans would think it's kind of dumb, but I think it's no. I think it's creepy. No, and I think it does it does really hold up, and I think it is still so effective, like I said, because it is so quick. Yeah. <laughs> and more proof that why it's so effective, it's like the – a really really short shot in the movie and we've talked the most about it i know <laughs> so true it stood the test of time <laughs> i think even when your brother and i were talking about it he was like yeah yeah that's just like i think that's a thing a lot of people remember when they think back on amityville horror they're like oh yeah that's mm. that that's yeah. the one scene that did it so <laughs> yeah. i mean the whole movie's amazing anyway but that i think that one scene really that's what i don't know makes it one of my favorite horror movie i mean i love the whole movie i love the casting i love the the atmosphere and the way it's shot, but that that scene really mm-hmm. helps it. It's fairly creepy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, if you don't have anything else, I guess we can do like our wrap up or whatever. I'm just really, really glad you did like it. Cause yeah, you, I, I, I liked know. the, I liked the slower build of it, the slower pace of it. Yeah. Um, and um, as it's been playing in the background here, I'm just remembering that like, I saw like it would go to the you know, fir- first day, Second day, third oh, day, twelfth yeah. day, and then I and remember in the re- I remember in the remake, it, like at one point it says one month later, and it's like yeah, the fact that just... the whole original is like it seems like in the span of like a couple just weeks like... or something is, yeah, is yeah. there, and that you follow them through that time is also you right. know helps helps the effectiveness of it because you're like in it with them, and it's not like we're gonna skip right. a month and then. No, I agree, and I think, um, well, we didn't really fully, because we got so caught up on the Jody thing, and that's fine, so I won't talk too long about it, but we did say, because we said when we get to the end, we wanted to mention this, that um, Ryan Reynolds' George character is so, like, unforgivable, because not only does he freaking murder the family dog, and nobody just says anything about that, but I think he lies, though, but I think they start to piece it together, the family does or whatever, but he also tries to not only because in the in the original George does swing the axe at Kathy, but she remembers she looks like old and like it's supposed to show like what he's seeing through his eyes. She looks like there's yeah. like it doesn't really look like her, and he's that's supposed to show what he's seeing. So he's about to hit her, and then she screams or whatever, and she's crying, and then he's like Kathy, and he snaps out of it. Well, in the fucking remake, he tries to not only go after Kathy but the kids, and they have to like climb out the window and go down like the roof to try to escape uh-huh. him and everything. And it's like, how could that be? And then they have to, like, tie him up, and they all get away through – like, they get on the boat in, in the remake, which, again, is just stupid and cliche. They have to have this big escape at the end through with the boat or whatever. But they, they like, tie George up, and, like, even the oldest son, who's, like, I think supposed to be, like, 12 or whatever, he's like, mm. why are we doing this, Mom? Let's just leave him. And she's like, no, we just got to get him away from the house. And it's like, oh, my God, that's so <laughs> dumb. Like, he just literally tried to murder your children and you, and he killed your dog. Whether she knows that or not, I don't really remember. But it's like yeah. that's, just, that's just ridiculously stupid. Yeah, no, it is. I know we said, like, you know, maybe when she goes to, like, the library or something and is researching everything, maybe there was a whole big article that was, like, explained the whole thing, like, oh, the house is really creepy and it makes people yeah. think. But. <laughs> well, she read about this torture chamber that was in, like, her basement, which I thought was kind of dumb, too. Like, I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Both versions have their own thing about what happens in the basement. And again, I think the fucking remake, of course, went over the top with it. And even when George is exploring it, he sees like bodies and it's like a whole torture chamber. Whereas in the original, I think it was just supposed to be like a ritualistic type of like thing, right. like room or whatever. But I don't know. They always got to go so overboard. And at yeah. least George redeems himself enough in the in the original. He doesn't even go half as bad as what they make him do in the in the remake. But he goes and saves the dog at the end. He gets the family to safety before he gets out and runs back into the house. Like he's he's mm-hmm. a redeemable dude, at least in my eyes in that one. And in the remake, I just don't see how that the mother of three children could like forgive this dude for doing that. Like I don't know, it's just insanity. <laughs> right. No. Well, I think that's perfect. Um... Perfect representation of how the the remake certainly falls apart as mm-hmm. you know as, as the as, as stupid shit like that happens, which sort of ruins the whole family dynamic and it makes everybody seem stupid and you know yeah. And they focused way too much on Ryan Reynolds just going nuts. Like almost every scene is just him looking angry or and and and. James Brolin does that too, but again, it's just it's just the pacing of that one is just so much better. And yeah, I yeah. I guess I guess overall. So here's the ending question, Dylan. Which one did you like better? 
1979 or Amityville 2005. Well, I told you there's a website I use called Flickchart where I like to rank movies after I see them for oh, the yeah. first time. That's cool. And the Amityville remake that I ranked after we watched it like and then ended up being like 490 something out of <laughs> oh, yeah. 530 movies I've ever seen. So that tells you something. That's hilarious. Do you remember which uh, where the original? I went? don't. I should have looked that up. I'm sure it's obviously a lot lower than fucking that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obvious, yeah. But so overall, I guess final thoughts. Um, I always like to ask this, even though I kind of yeah. know your answer. You did overall enjoy this movie. I know it's not like you said, and I like that you're honest that it's not really your type of sub genre, no. genre or whatever. But no. for like no. a haunted housey type movie, did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it, and um. It was, I guess this was the second time I've seen it, and, and I, like I said, I like, and this probably is a similar reason to why for a long time I enjoy, I liked, and maybe I still do, I haven't seen it in a long time, but why I preferred the Shining miniseries to the movie, because mm-hmm. I like, I the like, piece. yeah, yeah, and I like when you spend a longer period of time, like you're in the story with the characters for longer, and this movie really does that very well, it's very well paced, and um, it helped me get into it, so yeah. I enjoyed it. Yay! I'm so happy because it's definitely, it's <laughs> definitely up there. I know it wasn't in my top five. It om- it almost was. I almost had uh, Halloween as an honorable mention and had Amityville there, but um, yeah. at the end of the day, I feel like you could always switch out. You, mm-hmm. we, there's always going to be those few that are just your absolute favorite, and this is one that yeah has always been one of mine. Um, yeah, I'm nostalgic. I have nostalgia towards it too for growing up with it, and I love the whole family dynamic. I love the actors in it. I love the chemistry. I love Jody, scary ass bitch, or yeah. whatever it is. I don't know, but so yeah, I'm really glad we were able to watch it, and yeah. also followed up with the horrible remake. I am glad that you were you were able that to them back to back to kind of see what I'm. So yeah. Do you actually see that? My okay, this is my last question. I swear, do you actually like see what I mean now? Though when I say that they did ruin it in the remake, like after uh-huh. seeing the, the no, the remake was the... one of the, and I'm not just saying this, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Okay, good. That makes me feel better. I'm just saying <laughs> that it was a really bad remake, and. The good thing is we're not alone in thinking that there's a lot of times where you and I might not like something and people are like, mm-hmm. oh, that was actually pretty good. But uh, with that one, it's yeah. like hands down. Everybody is just like, no, Ryan Reynolds was horribly cast. The pacing is terrible. There's just random things that happen throughout that don't need to be there. Like when all the hands grab Ryan Reynolds in the bathtub, I did want to talk about that a little bit, but that's fine. Like th- that's just mm-hmm. so stupid and cliche again. Uh, Jody being a little girl and like, I don't know. It's just I'm just glad that. I'm glad that you agree and you were able to yeah. see the first one first and see the <laughs> drastic changes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely. But, but yeah, I would recommend this movie to anybody that likes horror movies. It's amazing. It's a classic. I think the original has some moments in it that may be a little tiny bit dated, but for me, I love it. Um, some people don't like the slow pacing of older horror movies, but that's like my right. favorite thing about older horror movies, how they establish the family and or the characters first and then co- slowly comes in the, the crazy mm-hmm. stuff because I think that makes it more believable. So yeah, Amityville's amazing. I'm so glad you watched it, and we should definitely watch it again, maybe in the in the future, and we can have like a little drinking game. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a little commentary that could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this will be the final note on it. This was, and <laughs> this is not to make fun of the movie, but I do make fun <laughs> of this moment. And I, this, this was playing in the background as we were talking, and I rewound a couple minutes ago to get to it to end it on this note, and I'm going to include <laughs> it in the podcast. My other favorite mo- moment from the movie, for a completely different reason, after the Jody scene, and I will end the podcast right after this, and I hope my, I hope this will be picked up on the recording. Oh, my gosh. Tell me if you can hear. Okay. Oh, my God. Uh...